the kingmakers and world peace brethren the reference text contain the things that are shaking the world our lord jesus christ after each of his sermons during his earthly ministry often concluded thus let he who has an ear let him hear all worldly kings emperors presidents governors and highly exalted persons have dwindled into oblivion or have been rendered insignificant since there now exists only one recognized king of glory the various institutions who are responsible for crowning kings emperors queens elect presidents and governors are those to be held responsible for the absence of peace in the whole world and even in heads how is it possible for you to claim or assume any position which is not given to you by god recall that when the children of israel departed from egypt they were under the leadership of moses though he was not their king and when they had arrived at the promised land they now demanded for a king from god mark you the leaders god chose for them were administrators and they acted as kings to the people and when eli whom god appointed his prophet to lead the israelites disobeyed him without delay god sent a message to him through little samuel informing him that his children informing him of his children's waywardness god revealed that eli's children prophet profanity god revealed that eli's children's profanity include stealing of the money of the tight money lying with women in the house of god and causing of various unwholesome act and yet eli did not caution or advise them to desist from such acts accordingly as was revealed to samuel the philistines the philistines defeated the israelites in in the battle that ensued between them the israel nation was rooted and the ark of covenant of god seized by the philistines and the two sons of eli who were colonels in the israelite army lost their lives at this all this happened in fulfillment of what god had prophesied when the israelites who survived the battle returned eli anxiously inquired about the outcome of the war and he was told that israel has been defeated he further sought to know the whereabouts of his two sons and when he was told that they were killed in the war the news was too much for his feeble heart and instantly he slumped and died the three of them died on that day that was eli's reward after the death of eli samuel was chosen by god to administer the affairs of israel but not quite long all israel assembled before samuel and demanded that he should ask god to appoint a king for them according to them they should not be without a king but little did they know that god had already appointed a king for them samuel was provoked because of the israelites desperate demand for a king he accused them of ingratitude samuel emphasized that 
considering all that he had done for them, yet they were not satisfied and appreciative. Rather, they unanimously sought for a king while he was still alive. Seeing, seeing that Samuel was really embittered and perturbed by this depth of ingratitude, God decided to console him and advise him to hold his peace. Obviously, the Israelite demand for a king revealed their, dis their dissatisfaction with Samuel's role in Israel, and so God promised to give them a king. Henceforth, I want you to have the understanding that certain things which is considered evil by people sometimes turn out to be good in the end so you should not question any occurrence or doubt any incident that takes place what you are required to do is to steadfastly follow it to the end god has diverse ways of communicating with us and giving us vital pieces of advice on various issues. The origin of kingship in Israel. Brethren, there was a certain brother whose father's sheep got lost. The brother's name was Saul. As the incidents occurred, he set out in search of the lost sheep in the company of two of his father's servants. They continued to search for the lost sheep for two days in vain. At this point, one of the servants informed Saul about a prophet who was living close to where they were conducting the search. The servant suggested that Saul should see the prophet who may reveal the whereabouts of the lost sheep. Though Saul accepted the suggestion, but he disclosed that a prophet cannot be consulted without a gift. Today, people do not take cognizance of this important custom. The servant, in response, told Saul that he had a gift that could be presented to the prophet. With this gift, they set out to see the prophet. As they approached his domain, the prophet himself stood far off and sighted them. He went forth to them and invited them into his dwelling place, gave them food, and accorded them lavish hospitality. Without being told, the prophet revealed their mission and every other detail to them. So, when they were set to leave, the prophet instructed Saul's companion to go ahead that he had something to tell Saul. They complied with the instruction and left. Samuel disclosed to Saul that he was going to be appointed and anointed a king over Israel. Mark you. The appointment was not decided by any one person or a group of people such as the kingmakers. It is only the father who appoints a king or leader of any kingdom or organization. So, Prophet Samuel revealed that at the appointed time, he will come to the people and anoint a king who will rule over them since they were desperately in need of a king. When the time eventually came, Samuel the prophet assembled all the people of Israel at Gilgal without ceremonies and entourage. There he told the people that the king they had asked for was in their midst. But the Israelites complained secretly amongst themselves that the one Samuel was about, was about to appoint as king over them was too young to be made a king. But Samuel paid the fears to their 
complaints, he went ahead and anointed Saul king over Israel. Later on, when Israel had to face the Philistines again in war, and it was customary that a particular rite had to be performed, apparently Saul, frightened by the advancing Philistine soldiers, decided to perform the rite, which was a performance of a burnt offering. As fated, immediately Saul had completed the offering, Samuel appeared. When Samuel demanded an explanation for his impatience, Saul explained that when he saw the advancing troops of the Philistines, he was tempted to carry out the offering. Due to this disobedience, Samuel rebuked Saul and consequently he tore his royal garment into four parts, which signified that he was not worthy of the kingship. It was after this scene that God instructed Samuel to go to the house of Jesse and appoint a king for Israel because a king for Israel was meant to come from the roots of Jesse. Jesse had eight children and seven of them were colonels in the Israelites army. David the youngest never went to war. He only took food to them in the battlefield. When Samuel got to Jesse's house, he requested that all the children of Jesse should be brought before him. He disclosed that God said the king of Israel will come from Jesse's house. Jesse then began to call his children one after the other to appear before Samuel. Jesse started by calling his first son. But when the first son appeared before Samuel, Samuel was not moved by the spirit. You should know, brethren, that from the very beginning, it has always been the Holy Spirit that reveals any future occurrence. Today, people seek self-protection by indulging in various diabolical practices. These evil involvements avail them nothing because they do not come from the Holy Spirit. This accounts for why the scripture explicitly disclosed that heaven is my throne and earth is my footstool what else will he build for me, said the Lord? Or what is the place of my rest? Had not my hand made all these things? That was in Acts chapter 7 verses 49 to 50. Brethren, it was God's divine will that prophet Samuel should appoint a king for Israel. So it followed that all the seven sons of Jesse were rejected by Samuel as eligible to, to occupy the king's position in Israel. Samuel then asked Jesse if the seven colonels were the only children he had. And Jesse responded that the only and last son that was left was a little boy. Who was David? Samuel demanded that David should be brought before him. And immediately David approached. Samuel was greatly moved in the spirit. Samuel said to Jesse, This is he whom God has chosen to rule over Israel. The issue of kingship. Brethren, meanwhile, Saul had already been a anointed king over Israel. So Samuel's identification of David as the new king of Israel caused conflict between Saul and David. 
Saul viewed David with earnest envy and deeply rooted animosity. That is why I have always advised you to surrender all your problems and difficulties to God. For the scriptures say, Except the Lord build the house, they labor in vain that build it. Except the Lord keep the city, the watchmen wake it, but in vain. That was in Psalm chapter 127 verse 1. Brethren, it appeared that at that time, the women of Israel always render a popular song that David killed 10,000 soldiers, while Saul killed only 1,000. This song greatly infuriated and disturbed Saul. He imagined himself remaining silent for a little boy to dethrone him. This was the origin of the animosity that existed between Saul and David. If I may ask, who was responsible for all that happened? The father was the brain behind all that transpired. The father did it because he knew the throne did not legitimately belong to Saul. Eventually, Saul and his three sons were killed in battle with the Philistines the same day. In, in this issue of royal kingship, is this issue of royal kingship not the cause of global problems? What comes to your mind whenever you hear about the being called Christ? Do you consider him a pastor or a bishop? It is a sad misconception to maintain that Christ is either a pastor or a bishop. Christ is God and the Holy Spirit who will rule the heaven and the entire universe. The world can be likened to a sheepfold without a shepherd. Christ is the supreme king, whilst the kings, the presidents, governors, and others who belong to the ruling class in the whole world have to administer the various places under their jurisdiction. The kings that are in the kingdom are appointed by God. They are above the presidents and governors of various countries in the world. An example of one of these countries is America. America is a country that is politically governed by a president and not a king. The only king known in America is King George. Political policies are used all over the world for the installation of kings. The question at this point is, if you claim to be a king, who appointed you a king? In the olden days, whenever a king institutes a law or issues an order, it was imperative that everybody abides by it. Nigeria also does not have a king. The monarchy in England, brethren, the only country in the world that has a king is England, which was once under the dominion of the Roman Empire. Everybody in the world is placed in his respective position and endowed with different gifts. It is a veritable historical fact that the king, that King James the first initially had two wives. But as time went on, God through the Pope caused a separation which eventually led to King James the first decision to remain without a wife. You should also be familiar with the history of the ascension of Queen Elizabeth to the throne of England. She succeeded her father who was the King of England. Since England practices monarchy, 
Ascension to the throne of England is hereditary. The kingship position is not given to anybody through election. Assuming England were like other countries of the world, the number of death cases that would have been resulting from such a monarchical arrangement would have been alarming. Everybody has his respective position. The Church of England was also under the political tutelage of Queen Elizabeth. This accounts for why her position as the monarch of England is very strong. In fact, she controls virtually every secular affair in England. I wonder if you are aware of these salient historical facts. Can you now understand the essence and relevance of having a king or queen in a city? Any city that has not a king or queen has perished. You can attest to the fact that England is one of the most disciplined countries in the world. In England, the queen heads all organizations. Her decision is irrevocable and considered final. No one opposes her in any case. But what is the situation with the kings in Nigeria? Any king is responsible for the outcome of any decision taken in his domain. To God, a king is regarded as a mediator and a shepherd. Recall the great number of death recorded among the Philistines when they seized the Ark of Covenant. It was after a series of investigation that they realized the cause of the frightful death rate and they then decided to return the Ark of Covenant to Israel. An Israelite found where the Ark was abandoned by the Philistines. He went home and reported it. The eventual bringing back of the Ark of Covenant marked the beginning of the young Israelites' prosperity. Brethren, one part of the king, David, when he heard, Brethren, on the part of the king, David, when he heard that the ark has been found, he hurriedly went with his armies and restored it to its normal place. This act showed the expected way a king should rule. A king must, a king must seek the well-being of his kingdom. A king is to his kingdom as a pope, as a bishop or a pastor, as an elder, is to a church. This also applies to a president and governor. Rulership does not call for the issuance of undesirable decrees. While the city you are in control is in wreckage, the country you are ruling must be law-abiding and peaceful, and your decision as a king must be final. You must exhibit honorable behavior before all the citizens of your kingdom. Every king must be loving, kind, and truthful. What was responsible for the hate and insubordination that were exhibited by the subjects of the various kings of old, such as Nebuchadnezzar, Pharaoh, and the rest of ancient kings. It was as a result of the cruel and brutal natures of these kings. Even in modern times, the kings of the world are very cruel and hostile to their subjects. In fact, nothing is good and interesting about their rulership. This reveals why the Holy Spirit has to come to the earth by himself 
to take over the rulership of the entire world. Christ has returned to the earth to assume his long promised lordship. The presence of Christ on earth is responsible for the series of wars waged against one another by the kings of the world. The kingdom of Christ is supreme, brethren. You must be aware of the dream of Nebuchadnezzar, which was interpreted by prophet Daniel, that kingdoms will come and go, but there will emerge a particular kingdom that will subdue all other kingdoms and reign supreme. That kingdom refers to the kingdom of Christ. All the recognized and scanty kingdoms of the world like England have specified have specified spheres of operation and periods of rulership and existence, but the kingdom of Christ is eternal. Christ is the only everlasting king. Nobody will rear its head his head when he assumes his rulership of the world. No. All of you are like sheep without a shepherd. It is until all have been brought under one rulership and king that you would be a sheepfold under one shepherd. Christ is the only king in heaven and on earth. Though David was ordained king by God and he walked according to the instructions of God, and consequently, God delivered Saul into David's hand, into David's hand, when a battle ensued between them. But he, David, refused to slay Saul, even when his people pressured, even when his people pressured him to do so. If you were present then, you would have unfailingly bundled David into a furnace of fire for refusing to kill Saul. Because David refused to kill Saul, showed that he was a God-fearing man. Christ, the greatest title, brethren, what constitute the habit of the present worldly kings are greed and cruelty among all the chieftaincy and traditional titles that abound in the world none is comparable to the title of christ that is why we are now expecting the rulership of christ for the whole world must have only one king who is christ this is affirmed in the scriptural nomination thus and the seventh angel sounded and there were great voices in heaven saying the kingdoms of this world are become the kingdoms of our lord and of his christ and he shall reign forever and ever that was in revelation chapter 11 verse 15 brethren this is the era of the reign of christ's kingdom Everything in the world is brought under his rulership and the motto of the new age is one love. The present ruling kings are on temporary assignments so they would not rule beyond the stipulated period. Obviously, these kings are the principles of division and hate to rule and for that reason the various kings do not understand themselves this accounts for why christ is very much in need i reiterate that this is the era of the rulership of christ he will rule the entire world and there will only be one law and one language all those who will rule with him must of necessity work hand in hand with him this is in line with the scriptural nomination that he is the king of kings and lord of lords 
because of that all the present kings are not recognized, the legitimate and real king will be recognized when Christ takes over the mantle of rulership. One aspect of my mission is to transform man and ultimately lead him to where he rightly belongs to enable everyone to know who is who. In the present state of things, who can distinctly say who the person next to him is? The so-called presidents and kings of the world are merely wasting their time. He whom God has ordained, be him a little child, nobody should view him with disdain, for God clearly knows why he has been chosen and for what purpose he is going to be used. Certainly, all of us belong to our respective place, and at the appointed time when everybody is allocated his appropriate position, there would be no more problem. The gospel is meant for the consumption of the entire human race. My advent is not only for the Africans, I have come for the whole world, and my duty is to amalgamate the entire world into one sheepfold under one shepherd.